Hey everyone, and welcome to this video tutorial. Today, we are diving into the world of Oracle Jet and how it can be harnessed to create stunning UIs for the Oracle Generative AI projects. We'll be exploring a demo app that lets you ask questions and receive AI-generated answers in a user-friendly chat interface. Let's get started. Before we dive into the code, let's get a bird's eye view of app's architecture. It is split into three main areas. Connection, we use WebSocket to establish a connection with the generative AI service. This is ensuring seamless communication between your questions and the answers. Client, or it's essentially the user interaction layer with questions input field acting as a gateway to unleash the power of artificial intelligence. And then server side. So handling authentication and communication with the generative AI service and receiving the question from the client. Now let's roll up our sleeves and get coding. We'll use Oracle Jet or Java Extension Toolkit, CLI, to install it with just one command. To make any modifications, go to src slash component slash content folder. Think of it as a blank canvas waiting for your creative touch. Next, let's open up the index file. We use JavaScript's built-in WebSocket support to establish a link with the backend server. Imagine it as a bridge that carries your question to the AI and brings back the answers. The code handles everything from opening and closing the connection to gracefully handling errors, ensuring smooth communication throughout. Now let's focus on app visual appeal. The render method in index defines the overall layout. Here is where CSS styling and components like OJET Flex and uh, OJET Input Search create a user interface that's both visually pleasing and responsive. It adapts seamlessly to different screen sizes, ensuring optimal usability across the devices. When you type a question and hit enter, the handle question change function springs into action. It acts as a gatekeeper, checking if a previous question awaits an answer before sending the new one. This ensures a smooth and orderly conversational flow. Once the question is sent, the UI displays a loading indicator, letting you know that the Oracle Generative AI service is generating your response. The onMessage function acts as a messenger, listening for incoming messages from the service. When a message arrives, it identifies it, its type um, and tags it with either question or answer and updates the chat list accordingly. This keeps you informed and engaged in the conversation with the AI. The chat component, located in chat.tsx, utilizes the OJ list view component, ensuring efficient rendering and accessibility. Think of it as an organized bookshelf where you can where your questions and AI answers are neatly arranged for easy reference. Within the chat component, we will leverage the power of custom components like question, answer, and loading. These components handle the specific rendering logic for each item in the chat list, promoting code modularity and maintainability. Imagine them as building blocks that you can easily reuse and customize, ensuring a clean and well-structured code base. Answers returned by the AI service often contain markdown formatting. Our app utilizes the MD wrapper component and the uh, mark.js library uh, to render this formatting in visual appealing way. Transforming plain text into code blocks, it makes the information easier to digest and understand. Without this library, the return content would just uh, look like uh, a lot of text on the page. Okay, so let's now deploy the demo locally. I open my folder and um, I have GitHub repo cloned locally and ready for me to play with. I'm gonna follow the guide that is available online on our GitHub page and essentially step-by-step step, uh, deploy the uh, application. So to get things started, you're gonna need the Oracle account. 
Uh, you're going to need the generate access to the generative AI service. Uh, and then locally, you're going to need things like Node and Python. So once you finish with the authentication and setting up of the Python SDK, um, you should have uh, already API signing key and all the stuff that is sort of related to the uh, authentication to OCI. So um, that is essentially how you're going to access and authenticate um, access to the server. So first of all, um, let's have a look at the structure of the folder. And um, in there, we have um, several folders. So we have our obviously readme file, and then we have our service folder and our app folder. So in order for us to deploy the application, um, we're going to have to obtain some information about our compartment that we can then populate in the server field. Open the service folder, and within there, there is a Python subfolder, which has the server.py. So as you can see at the top, we have several different libraries that we pull in. And then there is marked uh, a section with the to-do, and that is essentially where you can update your compartment information and and information about your uh, tenancy itself. Within that file, you can also define um, information about how you want to use the interface and the uh, number of token in terms of the RRM, temperature, top P, and, and all the sort of other things. And then if we scroll further down in the server, that this is where we have our uh, handle connection where, where we essentially, you know, wait for the data and get the data sent back to the client. Obviously, it comes in as a prompt, and we define it as an object, um, and then wait for the answer to come via WebSocket. And at the end of it, we're building a JSON object. We are also starting the server, obviously, using the host and local host and ports, but you can deploy that in the cloud. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to open a command line in here, and then I'm going to install, um, I'm going to create the, the environment and then uh, install all the requirements within that environment. So I'm going to get in my, um, in my CLI and in there, I'm going to open, uh, my service folder by typing CD service python and there i can just run and create uh, my virtual environment and then all i have to do is open that virtual environment and activate it and once i activated it um, i can upgrade my pip And then I can run install command to install all the requirements. So once the requirements are installed, I can just run Python three server.py and then it's going to start listening. So now what I can do is launch my client. So I have defined my ports, so I know on which ports I want for it, uh, for the server and the client to communicate. So you can obviously update that. So now let me go into my app folder. So I'm going to do come back with the cd dot dot slash dot dot slash app and then i'm going to install all my dependencies with the npm install and now what uh, the only thing left to do is to actually run the 
app with npx space ojet space serve. And that way I have my UI opening and in there I can write a question. So let's see, tell me a So as you can see, the loading icon is displayed. And then my answer comes back. And I can also see the print of that answer back in my console and then I can additionally see um, metadata that comes from the um, response itself. As mentioned before, this project is just a blank canvas that is versatile for many use cases and our commitment to you is that we will be adding new features and maintaining this code base going forward. So smash a like and check out the links in the video description.